Hey guys, welcome to today's lesson on 5.2 day one, reciprocal quotient and Pythagorean identities and how to use them to prove that an equality is true. So first and foremost, I wanna make sure you guys take out your purple sheet. Um, on the back side of your purple sheet, so the front side of your purple sheet has all the properties that we need to memorize, um, reciprocal, quotient, and Pythagorean identities and their different forms. But the back side is a strategy guide that will help us do what we're going to be required to do today. So if you look at the strategy guide for proving equality, so equality is the word equality comes from equation being equal, right? So I'm going to give you an equation that says that two things are equal, two sides are equal. Your job is to prove it. Now, you're gonna my suggestions are to always pick the side to work with that looks more complicated or in essence just looks longer than the other then you're going to work with only that side and manipulate it using the properties from your reciprocal identities quotient identities and pythagorean identities so that it looks like the other side of the equation one of the biggest things that you can do is make sure that you are comparing the two sides structurally okay so all of this will start to make more sense once we get into some of the examples so keep this purple sheet handy again the back side of the purple sheet has your strategy guide for proving equalities which is what we're going to start today all right so in 5.2 we are asked to prove that the equality is true. So we want to prove that the left side equals to the other side. However, you have to commit to only one side and work with that side only. That means that we cannot be moving things from the left side to the right side. We can't be adding and subtracting things to the left or to the right. You are only allowed to manipulate and commit to one side and get it to look like the other, okay? Now remember your strategy guide says that you really want to try to work with the more complicated side. So the one that just looks harder or um, looks more difficult. So let's take a look at number one, okay? Sine of theta times cosine of theta equals cosine of theta. So our job is to, um, chips, did I say sine theta cosine theta? I meant sine theta cotangent theta, okay. Um, we need to prove that the left side equals the right side. The left side has more pieces to it, right? It's the sine of theta times cotangent of theta, whereas the right side just says cosine of theta. So we're going to work with the left side in this example because it's the more quote unquote complicated side. Okay, remember your strategy guide says work with the more complicated side, the longer side. And our job is to get it to look like the right side, okay? So what I would do is start, remember the strategy guide says, compare the two sides structurally. So the left side has two um, trig functions that are multiplied, whereas the right side only has one. Also, the left side has sine and cotangent, where the right side has cosine. So my job is to somehow convert the left side so that it just has cosine. Okay, so sine by itself is cannot be written in terms of cosine okay so sine is just sine mm -hmm. but it's multiplied with cotangent and cotangent is related to cosine so if you look at your um, quotient identities cotangent is cosine over sine. So at least that brings into play cosine, remember, which is what we need it to be. We need, it, we need the left side to become something with cosine in it. Technical difficulties, okay. So cotangent can be written as cosine over sine. I'm just going to put a little equal sign here. Remember, our goal is to get it to be cosine of theta. Okay. 
It isn't yet, but it's getting a little closer, you'll see in just a second. So again, you need to find ways to use your properties and identities to get the left side to equal the right side. All right, if I use my canceling properties, I can cancel this sine of theta with this sine of theta, and now cosine of theta equals cosine of theta. Okay, now remember that was always our goal. So our, you got, got to keep your eyes on the prize. But notice that what we did is we just worked with the left side. So we committed um, and we didn't go back and forth between left and right. You are allowed to manipulate one side only. Okay, so pause the video and ask yourself if you have any questions. If you're ready to continue, keep going. Okay, so for the next one, we've got tangent of x over secant of x. We need that to equal sine of x. Again, I'm going to start with the more complicated side. So I'm going to commit to manipulating the left side. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to compare the two sides structurally. So the one thing that I notice is that the left side is a fraction and the right side is not. Also, the left side has tangent and secant, where the right side have, has sine. So I need to somehow connect tangent and secant back to sine using my identities. Well, we talked about how you can simplify fractions by multiplying by the reciprocal. That's a property that we're going to use often or a strategy we're going to use often. So let's kind of go with that for a second. Now remember, tangent is related to sine. Um, secant might not necessarily be. You might not see it right away, but you'll see how the fact that tangent is related to sine comes into play. So I'm going to color code here. Tangent of x is related to sine. Okay, so tangent of x can be written as sine over cosine. Okay, we did that in chapter four. Now secant, we're going to leave it as is. Some of you will realize that we're going to need to change it, but not yet. Okay, so remember our goal is to keep your eyes on the prize is to get sine of x. Now if I multiply by the reciprocal, okay, so if I keep sine of x over cosine x, which is tangent, of x, and I multiply by the reciprocal of secant, that'd be 1 over secant. That's going to help me because take a look. So, so far, all I've done is realize that tangent is related to sine. So I rewrote tangent using my quotient property, sine over cosine. I left the secant as, as it was. Then I rewrote the division into a multiplication of the reciprocal. And now, hopefully, you guys can see it. Remember, our goal is to end up with just sine of x. So there has to be a way for me to cancel the cosine of x and the secant of x that's um, under the 1. Well, <coughs> 1 over secant of x is cosine of x. Okay, this is a reciprocal identity. So if you look at your identity chart, 1 over secant, right here, 1 over secant, oopsies. One over secant is cosine. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and fill that in. So I have sine of x over cosine of x, which is my tangent, becomes just, so that stays, and then 1 over secant becomes cosine. Now you should see, right, cosine of x cancels, and we end up with the left side equaling the right side. 
the more we practice these, the more easy it'll be for you to try different strategies until you get to something that works. The goal, remember, is to use your identities to replace things, manipulate things from one side of the equation so that it turns into what the right side of the equation looks like or vice versa, okay? But again, you got to commit to one side of the equation and work with only the pieces on that side. Okay, next one. We've got cotangent of beta times sine of beta plus cosine of beta equals 2 cosine beta. So definitely going to start with the left side again because it just looks more complicated. Then I'm going to compare it structurally. The left side has um, two terms, so it's a binomial, it's got an addition, whereas the right side is a monomial, there's no addition or subtraction. So structurally, there are two terms on the left side with that addition, and the right side has no addition. So there's got to be a way for me to either combine them, check to see if we can combine them, or simplify. So as I look at these two pieces, they are definitely not like terms. Okay, so cotangent beta sine beta is not a like term with cosine of beta, so I cannot add them. However, cotangent is related to sine. So these are the types of things that you guys are going to start to get better at the more you practice. So if we just look at this piece, cotangent is cosine over sine, cosine of beta over sine of beta. So remember, that's being multiplied with sine of beta. Well, how does that help me? The sine cancels. And we end up with cosine of beta plus cosine of beta, which do 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 equals 2 cosine of beta. So I don't know if you guys have been keeping too much track, but it is important for you guys to see that in each step, I'm only doing one step per line, and I'm making sure that in my final line, I prove that the left side equals the right side. So if you go back to the previous examples, right, your very last line should show that the left side equals the right side, but you should only be showing one step at a time. Okay, so think about what we've been doing in these last three examples. We've been using reciprocal identities. We've been using quotient identities. Besides those, you will also need to know how to apply and use the Pythagorean identities. A big heads up that you're going to need that is when you look at the problem and they have sine squareds, cosine squareds, secant squares, tangent squareds. So when you have a quantity of a trig function that's squared, you might want to take a look at the Pythagorean identities and see how they might help. All right, so for this one, there's two ways to do it. You can work with the left side and get it to look like the right side, or you could work with the right side and get it to look with the left. My recommendation is when I'm done explaining it the way that I did it, that the way my brain um, went with this is to try to do it, but with the other side, okay? So <clears throat> one of the things that I noticed structurally, right? So I decided to commit and use the um, right side. So structurally, they both have addition, okay? But if you look at the right side, again, notice that I chose to work with the right side. There is a way to do this problem by starting with the left side and only working with the left side. So feel free to like try it that way too and then show me or show a teacher your steps and see if you did it right. But I chose to work with the right side. So what I noticed from the right side to the left is the right side has a bunch of signs or sorry, sines and cosine squareds, whereas the left side only has sine squared. So what I decided to do is, since the left side doesn't have cosine squared, I decided to replace cosine squared with a Pythagorean identity. So I left the three sine squared theta alone, and I decided to replace cosine squared theta 
by using this property here. That cosine squared equals 1 minus sine squared theta. So that equals 1 plus oops, 1 minus sine squared theta. Okay, so in, in essence, I'm using substitution to replace cosine squared theta with 1 minus sine squared theta because in my identity chart, that holds true. Cosine squared theta equals 1 minus sine squared theta. Okay, so now when I look at it, so remember, keep your eyes on the price. You want 1 plus sine squared theta. We're a little closer because at least now you can see we've got 3 sine squared theta. We have a plus 1 um, and then a negative sine squared theta or minus sine squared theta. These are like terms. So if I combine them, you will see that 3 sine squared minus 1 sine squared is 2 sine squared theta. And that is the same as 1 plus 2 sine squared theta. Remember, order doesn't matter um, in addition. So 1 plus 2 sine squared theta is the exact same thing as 2 sine squared theta plus 1. So you really don't need to rewrite them, but I'm showing you that they are the same. Again, I encourage you to try it again, but this time only work with the left side and see if you can do it by yourselves. Feel free to try it now if you want. Pause the video and give it a try. Okay, last couple few. So structurally, the left side is more complicated, number five. So I'm going to go ahead and work with the left side. Um, structurally, I noticed that um, they have 1 minus the quantity of secant squared minus tangent squared. That right away to me screams Pythagorean identity. So if you look at your Pythagorean identities, secant squared minus tangent squared equals 1. So that would be the first thing that I would try in this one, and that actually will benefit me because if you notice that this equals 1, you're pretty much already done, right? Doesn't 1 minus 1 equal 0? Yes, it does. Similarly, in the next one, the left side is definitely more complicated, okay? So I would definitely work with the left side. Structurally, there's a lot of terms on the left, and the right side only has one term. So there's got to be a way for me to, like, simplify or combine, like, terms. Um, right away, I can see a Pythagorean identity right here. Remember I said Costco, so cosecant squared minus cotangent squared equals one, and then one plus three is four. So you gotta learn to recognize um, the Pythagorean identities in their different forms. All right, this is your chance to ask questions, so feel free to reach out to me or to a teacher um, and go ahead and get started on your homework, which is 5.2 Practice A. Good luck and enjoy your day.